Kabbalah, Session 7. So what then is the meaning of the Tree of Life Diagram of Kabbalah? Our modern, latter-day Kabbalistical Tree of Life Diagram supposedly refers to the shape of a tree that had, formerly, been found only at the very center of the Pardens Orchard of Paradise, which had been called, during the times when Adam and Eve lived there, the Esekhaim, Tree of Knowledge, instead. When Adam and Eve inhabited Paradise, we are told by the eldest legends, there were two types of sacred, mystical tree, compared by some scholars to the fig, palm, and date, not types of trees, and from thence to seasonal, blossoming, and evergreen, conifer trees, and by other scholars on such, to apples and oranges. The more common type of foliage yielded an edible fruit so healthy to ingest, it provided indefinitely prolonged unto immortal life. And Adam and Eve were, we are told, given freely to eat of this type of fruit as long as they lived in Eden. However, upon the couple's mutual commission with the serpent of original sin, Adam and Eve were expelled from Eden, and a sevenfold curse was placed on their heads and on the heads of all future generations of their offspring. One notable aspect of God's sevenfold curse of retribution against his own creation comes in the form of God forbidding mankind from ever again partaking of the fruit of immortality, from the tree of life, indigenous only to paradise, which he now placed off limits behind an angel with a flaming sword, commanding we instead be forever condemned to partake in only the fruit of death, from the tree of knowledge over good and evil, for eating which in Eden we were exiled from thence to begin with. So to say that the Tree of Life diagram studied by scholars of HaKabbalah today is, in fact, a depiction of a literal sort of tree, vine, or even weed that grew once upon a time in mankind's eldest known land of milk and honey, is to say, at the least, that the study of this lattice framework structure is ancient in the extreme. The shape of what we now call the Tree of Life was once the tree of knowledge when we dwelt in Eden's garden, and this lattice framework structure, be it called whatever it may be, was simply an expression of one cube over another, or of one cube over time. It was, according to the myth, for simply becoming aware of this temporal dualism applying to ethical right and wrong that is, by ingesting the fruit of death from the tree of knowledge over good and evil, found once only in the center of the pardons of paradise, Garden of Eden, that humanity was forever banished from our earliest home. So we are told, the better plant, that once grew bountifully in nature, became, gradually or suddenly, supplanted by the worse plant, it seems to have seeded itself more easily, and finally choked the better plant out into extinction. This event, whatever the myth was based on, was so traumatic for our species that we have wandered in the opposite direction, away from our home in a garden paradise. Ever since, until now we have not only forgotten its original location, but have inarguably altered our capacity to recreate its conditions on this planet. So what then does the sevenfold curse of God's divine wrath on our kind tell us about the nature of good and evil, if not about life itself? The sevenfold structure has been employed since the pre-Babylonian era in Chaldea in the form of the seven classical planets of antiquity, and the Vedic era in India in the form of the seven chakras or nerve centers along the human spine and within one's brain. The addition to these of seven metals 
seems to be a later alchemical tradition. The earliest biblical reference to a base seven system is this sevenfold curse from Genesis 3, 14 to 24, which ostensibly removes these base seven blessings and replaces them with a base seven set of curses instead. It is telling that the probable order for the application of these curses as they occur in the biblical text is exactly opposite the ascending order of the blessings being removed, such that the first of God's curses is against the serpent, Genesis 3.14, corresponding to the Svatasthana chakra, and his last is for humanity to painfully labor, harvesting wheat to bake bread, that they may live and die as dust to dust until the end of our kind's days. Paraphrasing Genesis 3.19. And this corresponds to the Muladhara Chakra. As usual with all of my own diagrams, this order of assignations may be unique, but it also may be inaccurate in one or more details, or even else even possibly in its entirety. What can be said is that, following this point in the mythical history of our species, we have been continually perplexed by such base 7 and by other base 12 systems as well. Consider, for example, the seven vertex corners shared between a pair of tetrahedra at antipode, where one tetrahedron and another share only one such corner vertex point. Each tetrahedron has four such vertex points on its own, but when they join together they share one of these, and the result leaves seven in total. The reason we would consider the dual tetrahedron a suitable model for a tree of immortality from Eden, as opposed to the tree of knowledge we call the tree of life nowadays, is that it symbolizes a smaller, simpler subset in the same, larger, overall set to which the modern tree of life diagram of Kabbalah already belongs as well. That being to a set of polytopes that expands mathematically and geometrically in a naturally occurring format along a golden spiral concourse. Two nested or conjoined tetrahedra in a stellated octahedron shape are, given scale correspondence, able to fit perfectly into a single cube of equal dimensions. From thence one cube may double to two, as in the modern Tree of Life or Ancient Tree of Knowledge diagram, and continue expanding so on and so forth through the four-dimensional tesseract, or hypercube at 45 degrees, and on into the fifth-dimensional polytope correspondent to the square in 2D plane space, and so on and so forth, through at least the next five now plotted out dimensions. But let us return to the original Tree of Immortal Life diagram that can now only rightly be attributed the traits as given here for a tree of death, considering it is off limits to us now and barred from our ever again repossessing it by an angel with a flaming sword. Genesis 3.24 so here we see the seven vertex corners assigned the attributes of the seven hells and the twelve edges or paths between them left as shown here unlabeled. So we see the base seven system's original occurrence may be ancient in the extreme, even dating back to the earliest origins of the Homo sapiens species, and long passages have been composed as odes to this base seven system ranging from the elder, confer Sefer Raziel of Alhamalek, to the newer, confer Aleister Crowley 777. The base 7 system is older, in this context for the tree of immortality being a modern tree of death, than even the sevenfold vengeance of God smote down upon Adam and Eve at the exile. Hence, why God may have employed a base 7 curse in order to counter this seven base blessing. So in comparing the dual tetrahedra or stelloctahedral hypertetrahedron shape 
of the tree of immortal life, now a tree of death, structure to the dual cubic or conjoined hypercube shape of the tree of knowledge, now a tree of life, structure. What we find will prove to be the next step in evolution for these tree lattices into a hybrid species combining both into one. In short, the original tree of life, now called a tree of death, may be easily mounted onto the front and melded into the framework of the original tree of knowledge, now called a tree of life. The result combines the seven vertex cliffhoth of the tree of death and the ten sephirot emanations on the tree of life, as well as adds the amount of paths or edges connecting these points to one another together with each other, such that the twelve legs of the tree of death are added to the twenty-two paths on the tree of life. The result is a format that has capacity in the spaces on it for labeling no fewer than fifty traits or attributes. In short, it appears that the next evolutionary leap in comparing and contrasting the trees of life and death may be to combine them. Now if that is to be the case, let us proceed with the utmost caution, considering that the intervening millennia of human history, dividing us from Atlantis, contain ample examples of admonishment against allowing such divine knowledge to become corrupted and used for solely the gain of personal power. Here we can see how the tree of death in red may be combined with the tree of life in blue by adding the tree of death's four outer parallel vertex attributes to those of the tree of life's six. We bring the sum in the outer parallel columns to ten, and by adding the tree of death's central three aspects to the four of the tree of life's middle pillar, we arrive at a total of seven. Hence, instead of ten sephirot being divisible into three supernal over seven subtended emanations, we have the base ten sephirot added to the base seven planetary chakra system centrally. So we immediately see drastic changes becoming possible, and increasingly likely, in the assignation of traits and attributes to these lattice framework shapes. However, in essence, the structures themselves remain unchanged relative to one another, and are simply here being combined to form a single, new, third form from both made into one. And here we can see how the dual tetrahedra of the tree of death are here shown as dual red outline squares with blue diagonals in the upper left corner. Let's arbitrarily assign their component pieces lengths of red, one unit, and blue, the square root of two, for the sake of compressing the tetrahedral depth into a flattened two-dimensional plane space. Here we next see the tree of life diagram constructed similarly but from green outline squares also each of unit length one and blue diagonals of unit length square root of two. In the lower right corner of this schematic model we can see how combining these two models only requires performing a feat impossible given them both being solid objects in three-dimensional space, and that is, for them to overlap and be able to pass through one another, a feat that remains in flat, two-dimensional conceptual plane space relatively easy. Simply insert the red squares of the tree of death between the green squares of the tree of life, as shown. However, doing this using three-dimensional models would be quite a different endeavor. As we can begin to see, the angle at which we are perceiving this object also determines, to a very limited extent, a degree of optically illusory foreshortening, at least along the middle pillar of the tree of life, nevertheless. 
Here we see on the right a standard stick figure or linear array type diagram of this new form of Kabbalah formed as a hybrid synthesis between the tree of life and the tree of death showing numerals for the ten sephirot and twenty-two paths on the tree of life and for the seven hells and twelve paths on the tree of death on the left we see an expanded linear or bar array type diagram of the same and in this model we can see the ten sephirot and seven hells each named the twenty-two paths on the tree of life each symbolically signified as three alchemical phases seven planets and twelve signs of the zodiac and the twelve paths on the tree of death each numbered such was the basis of my research into this field around 2005 AD as I began to formulate the initial array of this model which I have since called the Jacob's Ladder Arrangement such is the basic model shown here for the initial attributes I placed upon this lattice array and titled it thus Jacob's Ladder. The lowermost Sephirot on the Tree of Life diagram, formerly attributable solely to Malkuth Kingdom, is now associated with the Muladhara Basal Chakra, lowest of the central seven. The uppermost Sephirot on the Tree of Life diagram formerly attributable solely to Kether, crown, is now associated with the Svadhisthana, crown, chakra, highest of the central seven. The remaining middle pillar Sephiroth and Clifoth being both thus also occupied with the remaining five more chakras of Vedic Yoga. And lastly, to the ten surrounding the central seven, with five on each side, are attributed the traits of the eight I Ching double hexagrams, plus a single Tao rod, broken, symbolic of Yang, where formerly Bina, understanding, was on the tree of life, and unbroken, symbolic of Yin, where formerly had been Chakna, wisdom, while the paths on both tree diagrams remain labeled by symbolic signs and by number. So we may see now, on this Jacob's Ladder arrangement, that although the same basic shapes may underlie the structural harmony, the placement relative to one another of traits assigned to these structures may be changed, in some cases radically. Again, in this array, as with all my works, I have tried to present as far advanced along a product as possible for me at the time that I make it, but in some cases minor, or even major, revisions are in order. Such was the case with this diagram, depicting a totally new age model of Kabbalah by combining the tree of life and the tree of death into one model, and then throwing traits and attributes at it until I saw what stuck. The original version of this diagram was somewhat less clear in its color scheme and so, several years after my original design of it, in around 2006, I rehashed this diagram to include a more discernible color coding. Between the original and this re-envisioning, I changed none of the attributed traits besides giving it an updated paint job. The base seven traits on either side of, but outside of, the framework of the lattice structure relate to the seven chakras shown as arising along the central column or pillar. These relate the seven chakras to the base seven spectral color-coded relationships that can form inside of a closed psychic network or social setting. The symbols correspondent to each pair in these seven psychosocial states are a planet and sign or pair of signs from the zodiac round, and each color-coded level is also labeled with one of the Kabbalion seven hermetic axioms along the left column, and one of Dr. Tim Leary's seven-dimensional game model all along the right. 
and with the powers of 10 expanding upward from electrons on the left and planets on the right to a brain on the left and the universe on the right. Inside the lattice diagram, the tree of death and tree of life are both assigned I Ching doubled hexagrams, or one of seven metals per cliffoth, and sephirot accordingly. The twelve paths on the tree of death being labeled by the eight bagua, I Ching trigrams, or one of five Vedic tattvas, and the twenty-two paths on the tree of life being labeled with the twelve signs of the zodiac round assigned to the twelve diagonals, the seven planets to the eight verticals, and the horizontal bars being assigned to the remaining tattvas. In addition to these signs, all the traits and attributes on this entire and complete Jacob's Ladder array of Hakabala are doubled with one of the fifty letters of the Vedic Sanskrit alphabet. Finally, the color coding of the paths is meant to underline the fact that there are now, in this combined model, 36 paths. So let us now dispense with the traits and attributes assigned to a Kabbalistical model of Jacob's Ladder and simply look at its basic, fundamental shape and form. Let us pause at this point to consider if we should go on, and if so, why? because beyond this point await only the dark arts. But, in truth, can even these sully the system of this base 17 point base 36 pathway model in itself? After all, one cannot blame the frame for the picture displayed in it, any more than one could judge a book by its cover. Bearing this in mind, however, let it be said that I propose the following methodology of hoclephotic demonology, solely in order to preempt anyone else less reserved from doing so first. Such a system as I am presenting and about to present here has direct relationship also to the 50 dead names of Marduk listed in the modern Simon Necronomicon, but derived therein from the same list given in the Babylonian Enuma Elish, as well as to the 72 Goetic demons of the lesser key of King Solomon. Shemham Farash based grimoire. Because the fifty letters of Sanskrit may be mapped onto this chart, therefore, so may be the fifty names of Marduk, and just so, because seventy two is merely fifty, plus a doubling of the twenty two foundation letter or tarot trump paths on the tree of life, so may be the seventy two Goetia. Now, Instead of all that is good and beneficial, useful and helpful in the world, let us look at the flip side of this model and see behind its veil of shadow to reveal that lattice's framework supporting instead all that is evil and harmful, futile and wretched in this world. On this arrangement we see the tree of death hung upon the tree of life, as in a usual Jacob's ladder array. However, in this model, we see addended to the topmost Cliffoth cortex, that reverse to obverse Kether, on the tree of life aspect of the model, a triangle of summoning, and below the model, subtended beneath Nehema, cognate in this model to reverse Malkuth, is an inverse pentagram star, this is the so-called blind dragon arrangement, conjoining both the torturous serpent, Samael, the blind demiurge, and the slant serpent, Lilith the elder, or Lilith the black, Samael's bride, which is merely to say, combining both the tree of life and tree of death models into one. Here we may see that uncertainty, void, and chaos are the listed traits within the uppermost or peak triangle of summoning above the twin-headed or false gods Cliffoth on the reverse side of the Sephiroth Kether crown. Here we may also see that the ten reverse or adverse cortices, usually displaying the ten Sephiroth on the tree of life, 
instead here in the blind dragon array display ten orders or types of demons and the covenants laid forth for obeying God given in the Ten Commandments. The twenty-two paths on the Tree of Life have all been replaced by Crowley's diagnoses of various minor bodily ailments, illnesses, and diseases in 777, as they corresponded to his Clephotix Genii Sui Generis, and then these have been arranged according to the order of the alphabetic substitution cipher indicated in that work to the various paths. The seven Clifoth Hells remain listed on the Tree of Death aspect of the Blind Dragon, but here and there also coupled to the seven venal sins, considered less mortal than breaking the Ten Commandments. The twelve paths on the Tree of Death are labeled according to twelve orders or types of demons, again according to Crowley's work 777. Subtended to the diagram is an inverse pentagram star, surrounded in a circle by the names of the five Edomite kingdom peoples who occupied Canaan prior to Israel. Such is the full extent of learning necessary about the blind dragon array to apply it to ritual magic systems theory. However, for deeper insights into this magical theoretic practice, here is also provided the Hebrew for the names of the ten demon kings over the reverse Sephirot and the twenty-two genia of the Clifoth Sui Generis of Alistair Crowley over the reverse paths. Also, the seven hells and twelve orders or types of demons are given in Hebrew on this arrangement. The entire result of this Hebrew script labeled Model of the Blind Dragon is called, rightly, the Saint Simon Array, named after Simon Magus, a notorious Hebrew magician of the first century AD. Notably, the crime of simony within the Catholic Church relates to dealing in masses or selling rank and official appointments in exchange for additional tithed donations. But what makes this model so averse or evil in this St. Simon arrangement form? In my work, The Tree of Death and the Cliffhoth, I discuss at great length how the historical origins for the modern ten demon kings and ten subservient orders of demons beneath them relate each demonic ruler to either a fallen angel, a disfavored elder deity, an unpopular historical figure, etc., but all being later redactions of earlier empowerments conferred upon these same, now demonized characters. In short, these kings of hell are the fallen elder gods, called the rebel angels, the Sumerian pantheon of the Anunnaki. Wielding the magical authority that knowing these blasphemous names commands is a responsibility for which most are yet unready. Consider again the potential for linking this tradition of pure evil to the parallel powers of the Goetic Shem Hamfarash, and one may be able to begin to comprehend why this power is likely too great for anyone to handle. Consider finally Crowley's own admonitions against insanity in his initiated interpretation of ritual magic introduction to the Goetia, where he compares evoking demons using sigil magic, to using a telephone to dial up an otherwise dormant part of one's own brain. Take care and beware not to disturb the angry, demonic ghosts of those once living gods. What they may awaken within you, you might not wish to know. Here, for example, we find the ten demon kings arranged as a tetractus of one, the king, Satan, Moloch, above two, the queens, Nehemiah and Lilith, above three, jacks or demon princes, above four, the ace card per each elemental suit. Below these are the remaining attributes from the blind dragon or St. Simon arrangement, listed here as ten rows of traits per each of four columns.
one per element. Hence, a subtotal of 50 may be arrived at hereby. Taking these usual 50 traits on the blind dragon array as 10 royal demon kings, etc., over 40 subservient demonic servitors, and ending it here. But to arrive at a sum of 72 traits being applied, all to one and the same model, being thus also correspondent to the Goetic Shimham for Ash, all that remains for one to do so would be to add the names of Crowley's 22 Cliffoth Sui Generis as correspondent to his list of 22 diseases onto the 22 paths in this arrangement. So, in this final model we will be looking at in this session, we see the traits given as 22 trumps, 10 numbered cards of water, 10 of air, 10 of fire, and 10 of earth, plus 10 demon kings, for a grand total of 72 traits. Note bene, however, that to achieve the harmonious placement of all 72 traits onto this lattice framework's structure, five traits are attributed to a pentagram star subtended to the model, and six to the triangle of summoning that appears atop the blind dragon and St. Simon arrangements. Lastly, it should be noted also, these are only some possible permutations of combinations of traits attributed as correspondent to the vertex corners and edge pathways of the lattice framework's structure. Other arrangements of these same traits have been tried, but could always be retried, and even then tried again. There is no short supply of possible permutations for these given traits on this lattice structure. Other sketches in my collection, not included here, depict, of course, the fifty dead names of Marduk by their sigils in the Necronomicon, and the placement concurrent to these of, obviously, the seventy-two Goetic Shimham Farash, displayed according to their sigils given in the lesser key of King Solomon Grimoire as well. These documents may be forthcoming in a future work or not, but until then I feel this is more than a sufficient amount of esoteric speculation about a possible demonic magic system to pique the interest of any amateur, would-be, or starving occultists in this work's audience and to start them, should they so wish it, off on the right foot in the right direction toward obtaining from these diagrams alone a system of practical ritual magic the dangers of such a system, I should mention again, remain untold, yet potentially profound.